right? Well, what if you heat it so much? What happens to that metal? It melts. Before it melts, what happens? What color does it turn? Red, right? What? It takes on the what? Of the fire, right? Becomes hot, becomes liquid. But usually when you heat up metal, is it pure red? What's there? Little specks of black, right? Why? Why? Where do the specks of black come from? Huh? Impurities, right? And as you heat this metal, as you bring this metal to high temperatures, what happens to those specks? Huh? They start? Not just disappear, how do they disappear? They spark, right? You see them like kind of shine up and burn, right? So if I took a fire and I burned you, would it hurt? It would, right? Right? So is the same way for us when we're refined by the fire that is the Holy Quran. It's not easy. We expect to go to church, ask God to forgive us. Oh, thank God. I received the Holy Quran. Put my arbitrary bow at the door, right? Now what happens? Do we, are we refined? Are we purified? No, why? Because we did not show all our impurities before God. Why? Because we're embarrassed of them, right? We're not willing to do and present. We're not like Isaiah. Isaiah said, told his sins before him, right? Before God. I'm a man of unclean lips. I am undone, right? So we have, in our repentance, have to approach the holy altar and truly confess our sins. As we do that. I said the word. Right? Confess. But we're so used to what? Drive through confession, right? What is drive through confession? Who's so you, right? We're so familiar. Probably one of the few Syriac words we, are, we actually know very well, right? So we run into church right before our Purvana starts, slide under the last person, <laughs> under our hundred ten out. Right? Does the hocus pocus, right? No. <laughs> Gives you the rushma, right? And you're on your way. <sighs> Made it right after, at the end of the morning prayer, right? Before the Holy Quran is started, right? We become so comfortable with not confessing our sins openly before the priest as the representative of the body of Christ that we prefer Husoya over confession. Husoya has been given to us as an accommodation. As, <laughs> as something to deal with the realities of the world and our weakness. It should not be the norm. It should not be the norm. Right? So keep that in mind. And what does confession do for us? What is confession? Hmm? Repentance, right? Repentance. Submitting ourselves before Christ. Asking him to remove all those impurities, even if they what? What happens when these things burn? Hurt, right? When these impurities are removed from us, they burn. So even if they are going to burn, even if it's going to be really bad and painful, we submit ourselves before God and ask him to remove them. So what does that mean? How do you remove the really hard impurities? Heat me up even more, right? Right? So that means you're going to have to go back in the fire sometimes, right? Go back to the altar. Go back to the altar. Go back to the altar. Go back to the altar until you are completely purified. It's because we don't approach the altar completely ready to remove our impurities that we don't feel that experience of full fire when we leave church. Right? So what are our R's so far? Receive Realize and repent. Yes, what's the next one? Is? Restore. Anybody get it? Do you know that? Got it. Do you guess that or do you remember me saying that? <laughs> Chicago people. <laughs> When we talk about the body of Christ, we talk about this concept of communion, right? 
Community. What does community mean? What does communion mean? Huh? Communion means communion. <laughs> what does communion mean? Huh? Go ahead. Coming into union. Okay, that's cool. So if I'm in communion with somebody, let's say I'm in communion with Christ. Don't need communion with somebody else. Communion with Christ. I have connection. How do I maintain that connection? Communicating. What else? What am I doing? Holding hands. I'm touching him, right? Right? I'm being one with him. We have communion with Christ. But who else do we have communion with? Each other, right? As members of the body of Christ. As members of the church. Is it just our parishioners? There's even more subsets to that, right? People we work in the ministry with. Who else? People we live with. Who are they called? Family, right? Right? Neighbors. <laughs> Who lives with their neighbors? <laughs> Our neighbors are people that we should, we have some issues with them and problems with them. We should definitely make sure that we take care of those as well. Right? But we have communion with all these different subsets, right, in our life, these different groups. So, Restoration is not only important between us and God, but with those that we are constantly in contact with, because they too are members of the body of Christ, especially our family, right? Yesterday we talked about in the small groups, right? Am I worthy to be a leader? We talked about all these stress factors, right? All these things that keep us away from ministry. And one of those things was school. One of those things was church, um, family, right? siblings, parents. But if we can't reconcile those things when we come to the altar, what do you think that black speck is going to be? Family. Right? Co-workers in the ministry. Right? My brother. My sister. Right? It's through that reconciliation we have through them, that restoration, and that restoration doesn't just happen when we go to the altar and receive kurban. Right? When does that happen? We have to do something, right? Right? That's part of the process. So approaching the altar is not just enough, right? The preparation, the things we do before we go to the altar is important also, right? It's a big process. But so in order for the Holy Kurbana and the grace of God to really have any meaning in our life, we need to be able to make sure that we have reconciled ourselves with the entire body of Christ. It's only then will we truly have that uh, feeling of fire when we leave the church. So what are the R's so far? Receive. Repent. Restore. So we have this kind of check right? Techniques of different things that we need to go through as we approach the Holy Altar. But when we leave the church, what happens? What happens, like, almost immediately? On the drive back, what usually happens? Someone cuts you off. Right? You're talking to your parents. And what happens? And I heard that uh, this guy is sorry for that. <laughs> or, or some gossip in the car, right? Someone cuts us off, we start yelling at them, right? What happens? It pulls us away from the reconciled body of Christ, right? So what do we do during the week then? If I need to make sure, because where are we going on Sunday again? Church, right? So I'm leaving church. And before I go to church again on Sunday, what do I need to do in the meantime? In the meantime, what needs to be done? How do you maintain that fire? Tell me. Pray. Pray, just pray. Read scripture, what else? Meditate by yourself? Do you do by yourself, what else? 
good family also, right? It may help you in reconciling, right? If you don't talk to your family on a regular basis. Your family are probably the people that love you the most, right? Right? As much as they may annoy you, and they may give you a hard time about stuff, they probably love you the most, right? So if this process needs to bear any fruit, what do we have to do? Spend time with them, pray with them, right? It's really important. So during the week, this is what we do. We pray, we read scripture, what else? How do we have how do we how do we make sure that we're still in connection with the body of Christ? The people in church, what do we do? Check them up on Facebook and see what they posted. Right? But we do that, right? But we don't call up and ask, hey, how are you how are you doing? How's school going? Right? You you, you look kind of sad on Sunday. But what's bothering you? Do we do that? Very rarely, right? But we should. Because my purification is dependent on my reconciliation with those that are also part of the body of Christ, right? So it's really important for us to not lose sight of that. Which means, but what's going to happen if I try to reconcile? What do we say about that purification, that fire? It's going to hurt sometimes, right? We may need to do things that... We may not like. Do we like feeling pain? No. But sometimes you have to feel pain in order for some good to happen, right? Quickly, any thoughts, questions, concerns? What does Isaiah do after he restores his relationship with Christ? Does he say, thank you, God, for blessing me and removing my sins? I'm going to go home and play some PS3 or go on Facebook. What do you do? What do you do? You hear, you hear something, right? What does he hear? Here's a call to from God. He's, God says something to him. What does God say to him? Whom shall I send? And what does he do? I'll find someone for you, God. Right? Is that what he says? What does he say? Here I am. Send me. But we we probably would say, oh, I have a, I have a long phone directory. I'll look, find somebody for you, God. Right? Our reaction has to be like Isaiah's. If we are truly reconciled with the body of Christ and with Christ and with God himself, what happens? Our reaction should be, here I am, Lord, send me. As leaders of the church, as we leave the church, as we go out the doors of the church, we have to make sure that we heed that call of Christ. And it may be right as soon as we feel that peace in our heart after we receive the Holy Quran, just after we feel like we did so much work, we'll be reconciled with each other, reconciled with the body of Christ, we're tired, right? Reconciling is tiring. Restoration of relationships is tiring. Right? Repenting for my sins is tiring. Right? And after being tired, do you want to keep going? No. But what do we have to do? Right? And react to that purification we have in, in a way that we do great things for the Lord. He goes out into the people, right? And then goes out to the people and spreads that which God expects of him. So this is the last R, right? What are the, what are the R's? Receive. Realize. 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 Yeah, right? So keep these steps in mind as we kind of go through um, some practical um, things.